Mark from Vortec Pro. Today we got a dyno test of a 467 cubic inch big block Chevy with a Pro Comp slash Speedmaster oval port cylinder head. Uh, it was an afterthought to do this video, but we started thinking that a lot of people like to use these heads and we wanted to make a video of what it took to do this and what we did to make this cylinder head work on this engine. Okay, let's go over the specs of this engine. Basically, this whole engine was brought to me by a customer. And normally, we don't build engines with Chinese cylinder heads on them, but we decided we'd try to make something out of this for the customer. And uh, basically, what it is, it's a 2 bolt 454 block. It's got your typical work that we do to all of them. It's decked to zero deck. It's, it's board 60 over. It's torque plate honed. It's line honed. It's got a full block prep. And uh, we put an Icon 782 forged piston, which has a 27cc domed dome on it, which we knew I knew would work with this combustion chamber or this cylinder head. So we used a Scat 9000 series crank with a GM 6135 production thumb rod with ARP bolts. Uh, we ended up regrinding the mains on the crank to get them in spec how we wanted them. Uh, basically, we have GM Performance Harmonic Balancer and a Pioneer Flex Plate. So, moving on to the cam, Redline ground us this hydraulic roller, which is ground on a 110. It's a steel core. It's 232 on intake, 238 at 50 on the exhaust and it's 600, 602 thousandths left. Again on a 110, I put it in on a 105, so it's four degrees advanced. Uh, real nice quality piece. Uh, real accurate, real, real nicely done cam. And then we used a Morel lifter and a Scorpion roller rocker. And uh, we have a Moroso oil pan with uh, some work that we did to the pan and a Melling M77 oil pump. Uh, Smith Brothers 83 wall push rods. They were 8 inch on the intake and 8850 on the exhaust. Now when we get to the cylinder heads, this is uh, where we ended up doing a lot of work to make this work on the engine. So let's go over that. Okay, I'm going to do my best to explain what I did to the heads to make them usable on this engine. Again, the heads came to us used. So we disassembled them, cleaned them. We found that the exhaust guys were completely worn. Uh, I looked at the valve train geometry and it, it wasn't right, but it wasn't that far off. I don't know what took the valve guides out. But we ended up replacing all 16 guides with the CHE guide. We uh, honed them all to size, and uh, we used a stainless steel 2150 intake valve and a stainless steel inch 880 exhaust valve. And we redid the valve job, and I went ahead and ported the heads, and this is what we ended up for flow, and this is a short port, which is basically the same as a long port. And these flow numbers are 28 inches on a super flow 600 bench. At 200, they flowed 164. At 300, they flowed 233. At 400, they flowed 280. At 500, they flowed 310. At 550, they flowed 320. At 600, they flowed 332. And they flowed 338 at 630 lift. So actually the flow wasn't bad and the low lift flow was good. But the problem with this head is the combustion chamber is so wide that you have to use a head gasket that has a 4540 bore, which is quite a bit bigger than a 4310 bore. So you have a lot of dead space. And I don't like using that big a gasket on a 4310 bore. Okay, so now we got our port work done and Here's how we set the head up so it could go on the engine and be usable. 
the factory studs and guide plates you might as well just throw in the garbage they're not even usable the studs the shank on the studs not long enough doesn't get up into the rocker trunnion so you're going to replace that with a with a custom ARP stud and, and I'm sorry but I don't remember the part number on that but what it is it has a longer shank that uh, the trunnion would ride on instead of riding on the threads your guide plates you're going to have to have adjustable guide plates and when I set the guide plates up I actually had to modify the guide plates for more range of motion so I could get the alignment right and that took quite a bit of time uh, we ended up cutting the heads to 117 cc's and uh, I set the springs up at 170 on the seat and 400 open so we had our completed head and we used a Performa RPM air gap on top of the heads and then the carburetor was an AED 1000 with a one inch open spacer okay so it's time to run the engine on the dyno and I did forget to tell you that the compression came out to 10 2 5 Okay, this is what we came up with on our dyno test. We basically had a peak of 604 horsepower, and uh, the engine made in the 590s on the torque. You know, you'd think that with those kind of flow numbers, you might have more power, but I really think that wide combustion chamber really hurts the overall power with that big head gasket. Just something to think about. I mean, actually quite a bit of work was actually done to the cylinder heads to get them to do, do this. So, if you're going to use this Speed Master Pro Comp head, what you need to know is, if you want your engine to be right, the factory guides aren't going to work, the factory valves aren't going to work, the studs aren't going to work, the guide plates aren't going to work. I mean, all that stuff has to be replaced and with good quality parts. It just, I don't believe it'll last. Uh, the geometry is kind of weird on the cylinder heads. They really need a backset rocker to get it the way it really needs to be. And I mean, you know, you're going to spend quite a bit of money trying to make this work. I mean, it actually was a lot of work to set these heads up to where I thought they'd be reliable. So you might want to consider that when you're buying these heads.